Here's a good example of what I want to show you guys today. No, it's not a rock. It came from that thing. If you spend much time hiking in the Shenandoah Valley, there's a chance you've run across one of these. But what exactly are they? Well, thousands of years ago, visitors from another planet. Sorry, just kidding. This, according to the Virginia Department of Historic Resources, is an iron furnace. The Catherine Furnace, to be precise. Built in 1836, it's a 30-foot tall stone stack, and it's the largest visible marker of an industrial operation that once relied on thousands of acres of land to supply wood, charcoal, iron ore, and limestone. Today, the furnace sits in a national forest. Back when it was active, a furnace like this could burn through an acre's worth of trees in the form of charcoal every day it operated, and typically they operated nonstop for half the year. And it's just one of many iron furnaces that for two centuries played a key role in the industrial economy of the Commonwealth of Virginia. For hikers in the region today, they're fascinating historical artifacts. If you're a rock hound, though, they're the source of some really cool stuff that you might find when you're out looking for rocks. You see, iron ore would be heated inside of the furnace, creating molten iron. That iron would collect at the bottom while impurities rose to the top. Once separated out, those impurities, which were called slag, didn't have much of a purpose. I guess in 1836, they didn't have a Department of Environmental Quality or the Federal Environmental Protection Agency policing nitty-gritty details of an industrial operation, so a lot of times, the slag would just get dumped nearby. And because iron furnaces of the day relied on running water to power them, slag often finds its way into rivers. So here at the Catherine Furnace, we're at the junction where Roaring Run and Cub Run meet. That proximity to running water means even if you aren't near a furnace, there's a good chance, in the Shenandoah Valley at least, that you might run across slag. Here at the Catherine Furnace, there was enough slag that it looks like they eventually used it as fill for this road pole off. That may give you the sense that it doesn't have much value, and frankly it probably doesn't. But I think it has some redeeming qualities. Let's head back home, where I have plenty that I've collected over the years. Here are some pieces of raw slag. I haven't done anything to it other than rinse off the dirt. The slag often has a neat wavy pattern to it. Those are always my favorite pieces. You can also see some air bubbles. The dark green pieces tend to have pretty severe bubbling. Those can make them really difficult to tumble or work with. This is probably my favorite of all the pieces that I've tumbled so far of slag. It has a really nice wavy pattern and I think it took on a pretty good shine. The material is pretty soft, so getting a good shine can be difficult. I've tumbled quite a bit of slag over the years, and you can see I've had some mixed results. I do really like all of the colors that I've got. Unfortunately, those bubbles have a tendency to hold on to the polish and create little white spots that I'm not a huge fan of. Occasionally, I'll find uh, pieces of slag that still have these little remnants in them, little tiny pieces that I'm not sure if it's remnants of iron or what, but I think that's really interesting. That's one of the really cool things about slag. It has a story to it that's pretty recent. The wavy gradient here I think is really pretty. I wish I could find a piece that was large enough and good enough quality that I could make a capuchon or something with it. I think it come out really, really good. I would love at some point to learn more about what sorts of minerals or materials are giving these different colors. You know, why why does the green seem to be more likely to have air pockets in it? And why is why is, are the darker pieces more likely to take on a nice shine and have a more consistent look? This one actually means a lot to me. It was the very first capuchon that I ever made myself. You can see that while it was difficult to get a nice shine from a tumbled piece, with the right lapidary tools, you can get a really nice shine on a piece of slag. I hope you all have enjoyed this video and maybe learned a little bit. If you have, go ahead and leave a note in the comments. Let me know. Until next time.